Welcome, welcome! It's my dog with the Texas Space Navy bringing you another Star Citizen video. And today I thought I would rejoin the How to Make Money in the Verse series with Part 1 in 311. As you can notice, the video is a little sped up. I have made this uh, video sped up times two. So if you want to know the actual runtime, how long it took to do this little run, I guess you could say, uh, it took a little under 30 minutes to do it all. So that's how much time you, I guess you could probably expect to do one of these runs. It was profitable, not as much as I was hoping or expecting, but again, this was only one run. As you build up more money, and if you decide to, to make the run go uh, to multiple stops instead of one, you could definitely bring in more money. Uh, but in this case, I was only able to make, oh, let me see, $153,338 credits. Yeah, I know, only, right? You can make that doing mining jobs as well. So which one is a better way to make money? Well, it just really depends. Mining has a little more luck to it than cargo hauling. Uh, well, I say that. Cargo hauling has always had an element of danger when it comes to 30Ks. And right now, with the mass amounts of people flying their gladiuses trying to get their 50 kills, it could also be dangerous if you run into some folks that are attempting to kill everybody. Uh, so you definitely have to worry about those two things when you're cargo hauling. That's definitely a big risk because... The difference between cargo hauling and mining, if you're cargo hauling, you're using your own investment. <coughs> you're throwing your own money into the cargo that you're hauling. So if you 30K, you could lose the entire load. And if you're running around in a Caterpillar, that is a lot. As you can see, I'm going to you know make an investment of uh, almost a million credits, and <coughs> it's... It would be a shame if I would have lost it. Uh, whereas if you are mining, your investment really is your ship, your rock, whatever it is that you're choosing to mine with, and of course your time, uh, which, I mean, both of them have a time element. If somebody blows you up or you 30K while you're in a rock or uh, a mole or even uh, the prospector, you're only going to lose the load that you you created you're only out the time whereas in cargo hauling you're going to be out the time the load the money all of it uh, there's there's no hope for you there so it's definitely still a very risky way to make money in the verse with that said i have encountered way less 30ks in 311 they're not gone they still happen and they will happen more frequently than they should but not nearly as bad as 310 or 39 or even 38 when those patches first came out. 311 is much more stable in comparison to previous patches. Let me know in the comments down below if you have done any cargo hauling in 311 and what kind of results you're having. Now this is my typical run that I like to do and it's from Lorville on Hurston to the moon Ariel and you can either go to Lathan or Bezdek and they both have Lair Knight which is a fantastic uh, ore to pick up but it's super pricey and they also have titanium uh, you could choose to run a full load of one or a full load of other obviously it's going to be a little cheaper if you want to run just titanium uh, but Lair Knight gives you better profit in the long run so if you can build up to where you can get a full load of lair night that's what i would advise doing now will you find a full load of lair night at one of these bases most likely not not unless it's a fresh server so if you wanted a full load you'd have to go to one place and then the other place to pick up all the lair night before you've made your way back to loreville which is what i would recommend doing is just go back to loreville drop it off and then come back out and just keep doing that to make your money. Now, there's a lot of people that are going to 
try to talk you into doing all sorts of different loops, which are fine. They could be a lot of fun, where you're like doing medical supplies, scrap, booze, whatever it is. There's a lot of people that would have you do that so you can maximize your profits and over your time. I mean, this this is sufficient to me. This is a very good run for 30 minutes. I mean, you're getting over 150,000 credits when you don't even put a million credits into it. I think that's a pretty decent run. Is it perfect? No. But uh, it's definitely a decent run, and it's enjoyable. Cargo hauling is somewhat relaxing, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, you do have that little tickle in the back of your neck saying, Oh, I could 30k any minute. Or, oh, what's this guy doing? Like, when I pulled into Lathan here, there was a Reclaimer and a Valkyrie sitting there. And I just knew that they were up to no good. But I gave them the benefit of the doubt. I minded my own business. I came in. I bought some uh, Laronite. I bought some Titanium. I filled up my cargo hold. Hoping and praying that they weren't going to come after me. They weren't going to pad ram me. They weren't going to try to destroy my ship, me, or anything. As you can see here, that Valkyrie is up in the air there. It looks like he's just getting situated on the pad. But definitely a moment of trepidation on my part. And it still is. I'm like, well, is he just sitting down to make me think he is not coming for me? You know, lull me into... Uh, you know, being lazy and complacent? Or is he just sitting down because he wants to do cargo haul himself? Or repair? Either way, I had set my throttle to max, I lifted my gear up, and I took off shooting into the sky as quickly as I could. Now that Valkyrie would be able to outrun me all day long. I'm in a hauler right now. And his is a gunship. So, or a gunship dropship combo, but he would definitely have been able to outrun me and kind of outgun me. But I still decided I would risk it. You know, I would take off as quick as I could and I would get back to Hurston. Now, when I get to Hurston, I'm still a little worried that I may run into people uh, here in orbit, you know, making the same run I'm doing and maybe just looking to cause problems. If you've been to Port Alisar, Tressler, uh, any of the space stations, really, most of the popular ones, especially like Grim Hex and, and Levski, are a freaking den for Gladius pilots right now trying to get their 50 kills. I mean, personally, I think going the Death Cult route is probably the uh, easiest way to do it, obviously, but it's also very, very enjoyable. I know a lot of people want to knock on it, hate on it, whatever. But the Conga Line of Death was extremely fun the other night. And there are discords set up for it. And I, I think tonight, uh, the Horton Hustle is actually hosting her own Conga Line of Death on her Twitch channel. Uh, you could probably check that out. Uh, it's probably going to still be going on by the time this video comes out. So definitely check her out. Uh, she's an awesome streamer. She streams quite frequently. And in October, she's doing a different costume every stream. So that's really awesome. And her husband joined us the other night during the Org Op Night. And he's a real fun guy to play with as well. Uh, real good, Real good people. Um, they definitely fit in with uh, our org and, and the Texas crowd, and uh, we're, we're glad to have them, and we're glad to play with them any chance we get, uh, which for me it's not very often because my time is very limited in game uh, between job, wife, and doing these videos. It's really hard for me to get any time in the game. It's, it's even hard for me to get time in the game to do videos. Uh, the wife quite is, isn't quite on board with the whole YouTube career yet, I need to make more money before she gets on board with that, I think. And, uh, you know, I'd like to start streaming, but I just don't uh, have time or the rig to really pull it off, I don't think. Um, that's definitely on my wish list right now is getting a new computer. I'm hoping, praying that I can do it uh, by the end of December. We'll just have to see what the money situation is at that time. Uh, you know, I, I don't want just a system that can just 
do it. I want a system that's going to last me a while. This one's lasted me almost eight years. Uh, so I want one that's built to last. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm aiming for and hoping for. Uh, but first, I've got to get through the, you know, this month and see how paying the bills and all that goes. My wife is wanting to get all sorts of dental work done, and that is pretty costly. So uh, there is that. So yeah, I've made it back to Lorville, and now I'm going to bring it down in the hangar, which I had to call twice to get it to open up. So that's still a problem, it seems like, on Hurston. Whenever you call to open the hangar, uh, you know, it'll close pretty quickly, and whenever you get close, you'll have to call again. Not the best landing I've ever had with a Caterpillar. Uh, you know, I thought I was closer to the back end than I was the forward end, especially because I made contact those hangar bays are just not big enough really for the caterpillar to go in super safely i mean yeah you can do it sure uh, but uh, obviously it's a little cramped at times as well caterpillar fly is a little difficult in atmosphere with 311 if you haven't flown it yet in 311 that's just a little Heads up, it's not the best in atmosphere, which you would expect from a ship like that. It's not super aerodynamic or anything. And, you know, it's meant to haul cargo. What I fear is, with the current mechanics, if you have a fully laden cargo, you know, your Caterpillar's full, how easy is it going to be to take off from a planet like Hurston, who has higher gravity than most? You know, what? What's how's that going to affect that ship because I can tell you it was difficult to take off from Hurston with an empty ship with one that has a full cargo I could only imagine it'll be even more difficult I think you know when the whole series comes in and you're doing most of your trading on the cargo decks of space stations they may have a little bit of an advantage because they only have to go from point A to point B and let somebody else do the rest of the hauling that's going to open up all sorts of gameplay loops for cargo haulers, by the way. You know, uh, Hull C brings in a huge amount of cargo to, uh, what is it, uh, Bayini or what is what is above? Uh, is it Bayini Point or Everest Harbor? It's Everest Harbor that's above Hurston. And those people, uh, you know, need to move the cargo from Everest Harbor all the way down to Lorville. So they're going to have to hire ships to do that. So you could definitely find a job as a smaller hauler doing those, you know, ferry runs, so to speak, between the surface and the space station. That's definitely going to be something they have in the game. And, I mean, if you have a org that, you know, can handle both the, you know, whole series into the space station and the next trip down to the planet you can make good money doing that together as you can see i am going to end up earning over well i'll be over 1.4 million and i started at 1.1 so I, I really made about 150,000 though so uh not a bad haul it was enjoyable you guys if you hit like this video hit that like button hit that subscribe button i'm mud dog with the texas space navy i'll see you out in the verse <laughs>